So we'll start with pre-season, some of your big rocks. I would recommend if you've been playing for a long period of time, over 10 years, and you're playing local football, from a um, motivation point of view, start your pre-season in January in terms of when you start getting back to the club. So November and December is where you're still in off-season. You're following a conditioning program and a strength program, much like our online program, which you can join for free on a 14-day trial. We're getting two to three runs in a week, a speed run, an endurance run, and a mix uh, fizz run where you're getting a little bit of everything with your agility. You're getting in some kicking loads, uh, but you're doing it on your own uh, schedule around your work life. You've got time for other things, and that's really important from a mental point of view, starting that preseason in January. So when you start, you're fresh, you're motivated, and you're really ready to go. But more importantly, you haven't done nothing. You've done some good work over November, December, so you're ready to get straight into the preseason training. So that's important. Tip number two from a field point of view, once you start that January, so let's say it's around Australia Day weekend, mid to late January, you want to make sure you complete 80% of the training sessions as research shows. You're far uh, less likely to um, get an injury when you complete 80, when athletes complete 80% of training sessions over a period of time. So complete 80% of training sessions, really important um, to be able to build up resilience, build robustness going into the season, which typically will start for most senior footballers around April. And then look at resting yourself every eight to 10 weeks. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if your body's showing signs or you're mentally showing signs of low concentration and fatigue and burnout from a mental point of view or physically, um, your body's just not recovering as well from games, give yourself a, a break after 10 weeks. I think Geelong Football Club did that really well with their senior athletes last year from an AFL example where they use the bye weeks um, to bank some recovery in for their senior athletes and it just helps prolong um, the energy of the athletes come September. So as well, from a flow point of view, in season, your um, first session of the week, the Tuesday session, should be a flush run. So you're just working on active recovery, getting some light movement into the body. Your body still, uh, it's particularly if you played on Saturday, your body's still potentially at a point of recovery mode. So you're at risk if you sprinted uh, or you did any heavy fatigue work of doing a soft tissue injury. So while you're in that early window, up to 72 hours uh, to 100 hours from the game, I'd focus on just working on restorative movement, recovery, bit of skill acquisition, tactical stuff. And then on Thursdays where you want the intensity to help prime you for the upcoming game, so hitting speed. So from a flow point of view, uh, recovery, focus on recovery early in the week and take it relatively light, um, but then um, go hard on Thursdays and attack a couple of drills at above match intensity and make sure you're hitting from a hamstring point of view around 90 percent of your max velocity in terms of sprint speed from a strength point of view posterior chain is really important so developing hamstring lengthening is strengthening so we want to make, make sure we're maintaining good uh, eccentric strength with your hamstrings with nordics remaining in deadlifts um, and also doing some unilateral work so single leg strength from a stability point of view with your foot and hip, um, really working on building integrity around the foot and the hip. As we know, as I mentioned before, calf injuries and uh, hamstring injuries are a high risk as you uh, get older. So we want to make sure that your calf complex and your hip, uh, as well as trunk, are working really well together. So things like uh, Bulgarian split squats, single leg RDLs, and Copenhagen's for groin strength will be really, really important. 